Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sandy Goodman, and you are welcome to Now Video Lessons. In this video series, we are going to be covering software application skills CIT 102. And this video is the first video lesson starting from Unit 1. Brief description of a computer system. And this unit is a foundation unit to the general knowledge of various applications of the computer system. This unit simply takes you through a brief history of computers, various types of computers and some basic components of the computer system, some of which are hidden away from your physical view. What are the objectives of today's lesson? One, we are going to explain the brief history of evolution of computer, categorize computer according to their design, identify the basic compute components of a computer system unit, states the basic function of the computer central processing unit, which uh, we have the acronym to be known as CPU. Okay, <coughs> sorry. Let's start uh, from a short history of a computer. Uh, the evolution of computers that we know today was accredited to Sir Charles Babbage. Uh, he is a British mathematician. The whole idea of the development of computing machineries has been dated back by many time in the time of Abacus. You know, Abacus is as old as 3000 BC and was primarily used as a calculating device to aid memory. The first computing machinery built in 1812 by Babbage was a model called the Difference Engine to compute logarithm tables and print the result. He later convinced or conceived rather in 1833 of building a better device capable of performing any calculation you know, such as addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. You know, this device was called the analytic engine. Yeah, analytic engine consists of most features we have in our today's computer. Babbage analytic engine could store intermediate results in the memory unit. Though Babbage died before the engine was finally constructed by his son in 1871. He still has the honor of being called the father of computer inventor today. She also interests you to know that this machine by Abacus uh, has the first computer program and it was developed by a woman named Ada Augusta Byron and she is today remembered as the first computer programmer. should know that the development of technology has been closely associated with the evolution of computer while Babbage machines were mechanical in design. Another computer called the Mark I was one of the first world electrical computers. There was the ENIAC acronym. ENIAC uh, simply means electronic numerical integrator and calculator was the first electronic computer built in 1945 the first computer to perform arithmetic and logic operation using a stored program 
uh, we have HSAC electronic delay storage automatic computer this was followed a few months later by EDVAC you know, electronic discrete automated computer today's computer are electronic in design and they keep improving on it until you know the first commercial electronic computer which is known as Univac 1 it simply means a universal automate, automatic computer that's the acronym meaning finally the history developed development uh, of computer can also be divided into phases or generations which we can state as the first generation computer you know, which uses vacuum tubes and we have the second generation which uses transistors and third generation which uses integrated circuits we also have the fourth generation computers using large scale integrated circuit and very large scale integrated circuit to this generation computer is the fourth generation why they gradually evolved to fifth generation computers um, those are those ones that mimic human intelligence okay right let's dig into types of computers yeah we can the first the first used by a very large organizations and it's known as mainframe computer mainframe computer is used by large organizations you can see the image here okay and the second one is mini computer mini computers are nest from mainframe for the perspective of mainframe they can be properly called medium sized computers but can perform many of the tasks that mainframe can on a reduced scale all right uh, the third one is microcomputers or personal computers you no know, call it pc sometimes in short the name microcomputer is coined from the fact that this uh, category is designed with a microprocessor you know? they also call them personal computer you know, because uh, they are typically designed for single users unlike the mainframe and mini computers that often serve more than one users you know? uh, most computers are fine today to be micro or PC you know? we can also categorize computers in other sections you know? such like desktop computer you know, can see the desktop computer having the monitor separate and the CPU um, the system unit rather you no know, system unit comprises of several components uh, this is the system unit okay and we can also have another category called uh, laptops you know, the laptops uh, like notebook they are portable and you can carry them along anywhere it has a battery of its own can stand any location actually can take it uh, to your journey like say if you're traveling you recharge the battery and you can walk along the way you know this one does not use vacuum tube unlike the desktop monitor this one uses what we call LCD and it simply means liquid crystal display right so the third one we can classify it also is the palm tops you know, palm top computers are very portable that you can carry them in our hands and that's about it okay so let's uh, discuss the computer system units the computer system unit 
uh, we have the system units, uh, we have the monitor, and we have the keyboard. Yeah, you can see it in the picture. This is the monitor, and this is the keyboard, and the system units. Like I said before, there are several components of the system units. We're going to discuss it uh, later in this unit. We have the main board or motherboard. Okay, the main board, as the name implies, provides the ability to interconnect directly or indirectly all the other computer devices. And every computer has a motherboard. It, uh, it has several several components that we can really discuss in the motherboard. Uh, this is where you socket your memory. I'm going to still discuss about that. It also has the you know, processor. I'm going to also discuss about it. You know, we have the position for the fan. And uh, what else can we see here? Uh, very important. Uh, you can also see expansion slot. You know, we call it PCI slot. You can slot in other components that didn't come with your uh, with the computer by default. Something like the radio card, the TV card, and uh, network card. There are several other cards you can actually get and slot in in this PCI slot. We have the CMOS backup battery position here that help us to retain the information that we save in our room. I'm still going to discuss that when we discuss about memory. Okay, uh, this is the slot to put in your memory card. The, sorry, the RAM. RAM. I want to still discuss that uh, below. Okay. This is the CPU slot here, and there are several other components. Uh, we have the VGA, where you socket in your, you know, your monitor. In the case of a desktop computer, All right? We are good. Okay, let's quickly discuss the drives. You know, in computer we have what we call drives. And this drives is simply the common uh, storage devices used by the computer you know, to keep information, you know, temporal or permanent storage of data. We have major three types of drives. We have the floppy or diskette drive. This is very fragile and you can easily lose the data stored in it and it's also you know outdated it's no longer in use in major computers and no longer put in the floppy disk because we now have you know other storage devices that can hold more data compared to the floppy disk and we also have fixed or hard disk drive Hard disk drive is where uh, even the, operators, uh, the operating system is stored. And we also have the DVD drive where you can read your CD. Uh, yeah, you can read CD, DVD, use it to play video, use it to install software applications and so on okay okay talking about central processing unit now central processing unit uh, is also called the processor and is the most important component of the computer system now it's usually referred to as the brain or heart of computer system. The 
handles all the uh, calculation, handles uh, the control, what displays to your monitor, it processes the data, um, everything that has to do with process of input and output hangs on this uh, central processing unit. Um, what are the functions? Uh, handles the arithmetic operation, handles logical operation, handles input and output uh, operations, it handles data movement, you know, moving from one location to the other, and the manipulation of the same data and jumping of instructions. You know, when you pass a command to the computer system, it processes it and gives you the output. Right? So, the CPU also have uh, components. And one of the components is arithmetic logic unit. Our acronym is ALU. And we have the CU, which is the control unit. We have the mem memory. You know, the arithmetic logic unit, uh, we can call it as the workhorse of the CPU. You know, you can see uh, the picture here. All these three components are embedded within it. You know. It has the control unit that directs uh, information, you know, collects the input and directs it and channels it to the output. We have the main memory where it, it stores some of the information or the operation given and you know, starts processing them one by one. And uh, let's discuss the computer memory unit. Okay. Like we know, the CPU, it cannot uh, store all the data it needs while it runs a program. You know, that is why we need another memory slot where it can save data and, uh, and be taking them one after the other to execute the instruction required. Right, so that is why we need other computer memory units. And the smallest the smallest measure in the computer memory is the byte. Now, one byte is equal to eight bits, and bit is either zero or one. Now, the word bit is obtained from the two word binary digits. You know, you should also remember that binary systems simply means base two counting system. No, understanding zero and one. We also have other uh, unit measurements such as kilobytes, and one kilobyte is equal to 1024 bytes, and we have one megabyte, which is uh, equals to one million plus bytes. Okay, and we also have gigabytes, which is up to a billion bytes. Okay, so should also take note of that okay so the major memories of computer is the ram and the rom you know when we are say looking at the motherboard we'll show you the slot for ram you no know, ram simply stands for random access memory and it simply means that the cells are organized so that the access time for any cell in the same for any other cells and is accomplished by arranging the cells in two dimensional array, you know, like, like spreadsheet. Now, RAM is volatile, you know, meaning when the computer is turned off, the content uh, will be lost. RAM does not uh, save data permanently. It's just for temporary storage, and uh, 
this CPU picks uh, data or instruction from the RAM or s and executes them. You know. Okay. Is also the computer main memory. And uh, that's the RAM. Okay. And the ROM stands for read only memory. Unlike the RAM, ROM is non volatile, it doesn't lose its content when the computer is switched off. You know, most of the you know, settings that keeps the computer default function is stored in this room. You know, like the first information you see on your computer screen anytime you switch it on. You know, those information are stored in the room. We also have the secondary auxiliary memories which stores information permanently and the example of those uh, memory unit is the fixed hard drive and the CD-ROM. You know, they permanently store data until they are deleted you know, and they are non-volatile. You know. When you switch off the system, the data remains there for you. You can see the picture of the hard drive. Okay, that is it for today. Uh, in this unit, you have been introduced to the brief history of computer and also have learned a number of basic features of the computer system. You have learned, for example, the basic components of your computer system. You are going to be working with as you regularly interact with the machine. Some of these components are not directly visible to our eyes. You know, some are hidden inside the computer system, and some you can actually touch them or handle them. You know, like the floppy disk, you can actually handle it. You know, you have equally learned in this unit about the various type of memories that the computer uses. For example, you have to remember to save your work always since uh, what you see on the screen are temporarily kept in the RAM you know, until it is saved in the permanent disk uh, like your CD-ROM or the hard drive. You know. uh, that is it. Uh, you can feel free to send me an email or follow me on Twitter can tweet at me. Uh, you can also you know, face me on Facebook. <laughs> All right, uh, that is the end of today's lecture. Uh, see you soon for Unit 2. Thank you. Bye bye.